Open your Bibles with me to John chapter 14. I will just, I'll go through some scriptures and some points here. And then I have ministry that the Lord has made me aware of. John 14. And these, these, these scriptures have been mistaken in times past as prayer scriptures, but they're not. 14th chapter of John's gospel, verse 12, verily, verily. Now in the Greek language and, and not, not just in, in the, the, the language itself, but it, it's just on the street common. When someone says that, verily, verily, it is tantamount to listen because I'm telling you the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. This big. And it's in red, right? <laughs> Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Amen. Well, did he go? Yes. yes, he did. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, as I said, people have thought that this was praying, asking, but actually the better rendering of that is whatsoever you shall demand in my name, I will do it. If you shall demand anything in my name. Now let's turn over to Acts chapter three. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour or three o'clock in the afternoon. A certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple ask an alms. Now I, I want you to realize, not, notice what, what it said there. A certain man lame from mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily, whom they laid daily, whom they laid daily. Jesus had walked right by that man. Huh? He'd walked right by that man. Well, why didn't he do something about this? Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. He said, I can do nothing of myself. Amen. Uh, now, th 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 this is this very important information. Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. Uh, I envisioned this man I, uh, with, it, with his head down. He might have looked up and said something and uh, and but even if, even if he didn't have his head down, if he's looking, he wasn't paying any attention. But Peter said, look! He needed his attention. Look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus, the anointed Messiah of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
He took the man by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. He leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now here's what I wanted you to see. They made a demand on that name. That's exactly what Jesus was talking about. Well, who's the healer? Huh? Say it. Jesus. Jesus is the healer. He said, whatever you demand in my name, who else is Jesus? He's the administrator. He's the high priest. Whoo, glory to God. Yeah, he administrates this covenant. And he made covenant that day. And when he said to them, whatever you demand in my name after I go to the Father, whatever you demand in my name, I will do it that the Father be glorified. And he did it. But I wanted you to see this. Always remember this. His name can do anything he can do. If your name isn't any good, you're not any good. Your name can do things with you and Adam, you be in prison. (laughs) I always remember uh, old Robert's oldest son, Ronnie, he came out of the military and, and he, he was tired of being old Robert's son. I mean, it, you, you know, you come back to Tulsa and everybody's picking at you and this bunch over here thinks you, you're wonderful and this bunch over here hates you and, and you're talking ugly about your daddy and all that. And, and they went to public school and the kids just harassed them all the time about their, about their dad. Well, anyway, he decided he got out of service that he just, you know, he's just, he's just Ronnie Roberts. And uh, <laughs> he said, I, 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 needed a, I, I needed a car. He said, I needed everything. And he said, I, I went to the bank and, and you know, he, by this time he had, a, he had a job. I don't know what he was doing, <laughs> but <laughs> he went to the bank, applied for a car loan and he didn't qualify. And he went in and asked the, the banker, well, what, what, what else do you need? I mean, is there, uh, well, he said, son, the problem, we have, we don't know you. We don't know anything about you. And um, he said, well, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> he said, would it help any if you knew my daddy's Oral Roberts? He said, What's the matter with you, boy? How come you didn't tell me that? Well, certainly it matters. Sit down here and fill out this paper and fill out that paper and go get your car. (laughs) Suddenly, things changed at the sound of that name. (laughs) Suddenly, they knew who he was. And I want to tell you something, sweetheart. Every demon in hell knows exactly who you are. And they hope you wasn't going to find out this morning what I'm about to show you. Now, look at what happened. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew that it was he who was set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. And the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John. All the people ran together and, uh, in, in the, unto the porch that's called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Now they were filled with wonder and amazement and now they're greatly wondering. <clears throat> and when Peter saw it, he answered the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or by why, or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man walk? 
Now there are millions and 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 millions of Christians that believe that man walked because Peter was an apostle. He just said that wasn't true. He was an apostle, right? Well, then he ought to know. <laughs> Amen. Look what he said. Let's, let's look at it again. I want you to put your eyes on it. You men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness, we made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers had glorified his son, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You denied the Holy One and the just who desired and desired a murderer be granted unto you. You killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised up from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know, yes, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, I want to point out something here. Faith in the name of Jesus. How does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's the way you get faith in the name. You spend time meditating in the Word of God concerning His name. You go to the Old Covenant and you study His names. But all of those names come under the jurisdiction of one name. Hallelujah. That name. Whew. Now, I want you to see something here. Go back to verse 10. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. They weren't filled with faith. They were filled with wonder and amazement. Miracles don't cause faith. Verse 11, greatly wondering. They were filled with wonder and amazement. And then they were greatly wondering. Now, Peter then rose up and began to preach. Flowing right on down into chapter four. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and and the Sadducees came upon them being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was even tied. How be it many of them which heard the word believed. They'd been filled with wonder and amazement at the miracle, but by the time Peter got through preaching, faith came. Faith came. Faith. They believe. That's faith. Faith came. Whew, glory to God. Amen. So now we know, now we know how faith comes in the name of Jesus. It comes from the Word. It comes from hearing messages like this. It comes from spending time meditating on that name. It's, it comes from spending, spending time before the Lord and depending on the greater one that lives with, within you, the great teacher. You turn to him and say, sir, teach me the name. Glory to God. I, I, I was uh, one night, uh, j just I was awake and not sleepy. I, and I said, Lord, teach me the name. Oh, it rose up on the inside of me. I said, teach me, t teach me how to minister to the sick and, and in that name, the name that raises the dead. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And he began to do that. Praise God. 
And um, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter one. We've been there before, but now we're going for a different reason. <laughs> when you get into these, these matters, the, the weighty matters of the spirit and so forth, you're going to spend a lot of time in the book of Hebrews. God who had sundry time and in different manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins set down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. By inheritance, he obtained a more excellent name than they. Jesus inherited his name from God. He called him God. And you see it right here in, in this, uh, this first chapter of the book of Hebrews. Now the 10th verse, and thou Lord, he called him Lord. He called him capital L, little capital O-R-D. That always indicates the same Hebrew word that's translated, um, they, they messed it up Englishizing it, but, but at least we know what it, what it is. The, the word Jehovah, the mighty name, the name that, that Jews will not pronounce. They'll not attempt to pronounce it. That name that is so powerful, so big. Now it's, I went to the Lord about it. I said, Lord, you know, there, there's some question about how that mighty name is pronounced and there's those that pronounce it this and that and other. I, 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 I want to know how, how to renew my mind to that great name. <sighs> my, my. He said, pronounce now, this is just for me. Now, now you, you can, you know, you, that's between you and Jesus. You can do what you want to do, but this bless me. Because I, 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 have, I have such respect and honor for that name. I, 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 whoa, whoa. And I, he, he said, use um, the Hebrew letters, yud Hey vav I said, yeah, I can do that. And I just, I just let that represent that, that name, the name of God, the name that men have a hard time speaking. It, it, it's immeasurable. If you're going to measure the power in Jesus' name, you're going to have to be able to measure the power of God. Because he inherited that name that name. <laughs> Whoa. Now, his name was conferred upon him by the Father. Let's go to Philippians chapter two. In Philippians chapter two and Let's start with verse five, because this is talking to us. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In other, you need to start thinking this way. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God. See, you're a joint heir with Christ. You, you, you don't need to be uh, trembling when, when you say, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm equal to God. No, you're not taken away from his majesty. No, he has raised you up and made you sit together with him. And you, you have to let your mind think this way because it ain't going to think it just accidentally. 
No, no, because you know your ugly self, right? <laughs> but no, you ought not be, you ought not be tagging yourself with that. You need to let your mind think according to the word. I'm a joint heir with Christ and I'm seated with him on the throne of grace. But made of himself no reputation, he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We know what happened. He went into hell. He was made to be sin for us. He, he, he was made the curse. Amen. Amen. And in the pit of hell, the word of God came down into that pit and Jesus was the first man to ever be born again from spiritual death to the life of God. Hallelujah. He's called the firstborn from the dead. Now, God also hath highly exalted him. Now we read over there in the book of Hebrews, he inherited that name. God called him yud heh vav -Heh. L O R D. He called him Yah of his name. Now watch it. God hath highly exalted him and given him a name, no, he gave him his name. He gave him his name, which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things. Actually, a better rendering is beings. That's the way the Amplified translates of beings in heaven, beings in earth, and beings under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus the anointed is capital L, little capital O-R-D. Ha, ha, ha. They are one and the same. Glory to God. So his name, he inherited the greatness in his name because it's God's name. His name was conferred upon him by the Father when he exalted him out of the pit of hell and raised him up on high. Amen. King of kings, hallelujah. Now then, the third way he achieved the authority in his name was by conquest. Let's turn to Colossians chapter two. Look at the 15th verse. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He defeated hell. He took what Adam threw away. He took from the devil everything and all of his armor. He defeated him and put him underfoot. And he said, he said, all authority has been given unto me both in heaven and in earth. And I have authority. I have the keys of death and hell. He took it. Hallelujah. So his name, his name, he inherited God's name. His name was conferred upon him. He achieved the authority in his name by great conquest. His conquest over Satan in hell. Hallelujah. And then Luke the 11th chapter and the 22nd verse said, he spoiled him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, oh, 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 I want you to look at this. 
we just looked at the fourth, the third and fourth chapters of the book of Acts uh, and uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go back over there. Thank you, Lord. And Peter is preaching. Verse five, it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers, elders, and scribes, and Annas the high priest, Caiaphas and Caiaphas, what's his name? And John, <laughs> Caiaphas, okay, thank you, Lord. Caiaphas <laughs> and Alexander and as many were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together in Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power or by what name have you done this? Peter filled with the Holy Ghost said unto them, now this is the greater one that dwells within him talking, isn't it? Isn't that right? You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised up from the dead, even by him that this man stand before you made whole. All right, I wanna ask you a question. Here is this mighty name. Here is the name of the most high God that was so powerful men were afraid to repeat it. <clears throat> they, <clears throat> it came to the, to the point where <clears throat> only, only the prophets dared say that name. So powerful, so powerful, so majestic. And now that same name conferred upon Jesus that same name given unto him because of great conquest. Hallelujah. Amen. He took it, belonged to him. Hallelujah. Yeah, but <clears throat> what about now? I mean, is that name, is that name and just something in, in somebody can use in heaven? No, I want you to listen to what he said. Verse 11, this is the stone which was set at naught by you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved given among men. Does that seat got a seat belt on it? If it does, you better strap down. Let's go to Ephesians chapter three. If you can't shout over this, your wood's wet. Ephesians chapter three. Verse 14, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom, now, not of Jesus, he said, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom? He's talking about, he's referring to the Father. Can, can you see that? All right. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. When you entered into this blood covenant with Jesus, yes, sir. you were named after him Amen. and after the Father. 
that exalted name. God has not just allowed you to use his name so that the devil would have to listen to you. No, no. Hey, when Gloria Copeland and I entered covenant with one another, we have, we're, we're in covenant. And in that covenant, we were made one. And the scripture says in the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, that the same thing that happened when you were born again and connected with Jesus, that's what happened between this man and this woman put together by God. This is serious business. My name became hers. She, she has no, I mean, she has no qualms or misgivings about using it. It belongs. Thank you, darling. You will not lose your reward. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Amen, I'll drink to that. <laughs> For the benefit of the CD listeners, it was water. <laughs> the DVD people know it, but the CD people, I know. Thank you, sweetheart. I, well, you hold it. I'll be back by this way. <laughs> but now that's her name. It is not just legally her name. We became one. You and I became one spirit with the Lord. Ephesians 5.30 says, we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And as he is, so are we. This is 1 John 4. As he is, so are we in this world. You have absolute power. You have power of attorney to speak in his name and all of heaven will back it as if Jesus was personally present saying it. Now you, 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 you have to spend some time at this. You have to meditate this. You have to spend time listening to it and looking at it and knowing it because faith comes by hearing and it's faith in the name that does the work. But you have to realize this. When you, re when you begin to understand and, and you begin to have faith in that name and it begins to grow on the inside of you, also it begins to grow in you that that's your name. That's my name. Amen, that's my name. Amen, hallelujah. You hear Satan saying, I, 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 you know, and you just, you're a liar and the father of it. Now get. Amen. 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 He knows. I know the name. Do you dare? Look at the 91st Psalm. Oh, yeah. Turn over it right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, now, now whoa, whoa. hold it. I, I perceived what somebody said. Well, you mean we're not supposed to actually say the name of Jesus? Now, you know better than that. That didn't come from your mind. The devil trying to con you. Just rebuke him. You're a liar and a father of it. In the name of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve. Get. Shut your mouth. I take, <laughs> I enjoy, I enjoy. And, and, and we will, close with this. The 91st Psalm. 
Now I want you to notice something about this 91st Psalm. I want you to notice the ministry of angels in this Psalm. We won't take a lot, but we've been talking about angels and I, and I want you to see something. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Now notice this. I will say, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. I will say of yet hey, vav hey, that he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. And the next word is surely. Now you'll see other translations. If I remember correctly, the Amplified translation th this way. I will say of the Lord and then surely. Well, I believe it in my heart and I said it with my mouth. And I said it of the Lord. And surely, I said it and surely he'll do it. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. It will not come nigh you. Only with your eyes. I put, I wrote a little note there, like a bad movie. <laughs> Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you and neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Amen. 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 That's it. That's it. For, now he said all of that and the next word is for. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. And they'll bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. All that he said, fowler, noisome pestilence, cover with his feathers, under his wings you trust. His truth be a shield and bugle not afraid of terror by night and so forth and so on and so on and so on. All of that is God's angelic force ministering spirits sent forth to minister for you. That is their job to keep you in all your ways. And you need to be saying He is my refuge. Yes, yes. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou temple, trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he's known my name. Yeah. What does that phrase mean? Because he knows he's in covenant with me. He has a blood agreement with me. And what, sir? <laughs> He'll call upon me. I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble and I'll deliver him and honor him. And with long life, 
long satisfied life. That statement is based on Genesis 6, 3, that the days of man shall be 120 years. With long satisfied life. That's part of your covenant. That's right, that's right. Glory. And you young ones ought to start believing for that now instead of waiting another 30 years. Get it in your heart and mouth now. Start walking in it now. Start confessing it now. With long life. Oh, I'll tell you, that psalm ought to be part of your vocabulary. That's the soldier's psalm. Very close friend of mine. <laughs> he pastors up, up, up in Alaska, but, but he, was, he was a special forces uh, officer and, uh, and he's full colonel. And he was being redeployed and, and he said, Brother Kelly, I want you to lay hands on me. So, so I did. <laughs> and I, I gave him the 91st Psalm and, I, and, and, and we went over it together. And I mean, he's a word of faith guy. He pleased God. I said, to him, now, Keith, you need, you need to be teaching that to everybody under your command. He, he was taking a command that was high casualty rate, high casualty command. I said, teach it, teach it to your troops. Make them memorize it. Because I had the testimony of another guy in, in uh, Southeast Asia that I had ministered this to. And, and I mean, it, man, I mean, he had them quoting it every day. It was just like you, when you had to quote the orders of the day, any of you been in the military. And, and you, you, you had to know if, what, what's the fourth one. Well, it's, you had, you had, so he had it with the 91st Psalm and, and verse four, and you had to quote it. Verse 10, you had to quote it. <laughs> Amen. Everybody in the unit knew it. Now they weren't all born again, but they knew it come from the Bible. But it make any difference whether, whether they believed it or not. <laughs> Man, you know, the CO said, I got to learn this. So they did. And his whole tour in Vietnam, they had zero casualties. When Keith Kerber went to, went to Iraq, this high casualty unit, he's doing the same thing. I said, Keith, when you get back, call me now. And at the end of his tour, the, uh, he, I got a call about three o'clock in the morning. The phone rang and he was just a shouting. He said, I know I woke you up, I can't wait. <laughs> he, he said, I just got back, Brother Kenneth. He said, I didn't have a casualty in this whole tour. I did not have a casualty, not one, not one. Hallelujah. The name, he knows my name. Glory, 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 glory. I was teaching this very same thing in uh, Jamaica. And we'd had a service in Spanish town all day, nearly had a, oh, just an outpouring. And they came and got me and said, we got to go to New Hope. We, it, and so we got to New Hope up in the mountains. And if you ain't never been in the Caribbean, particularly in, in uh, the West Indies, you don't know what dark is. I mean, it, it's dark, dark. And in this little valley, New Hope was a banana grove. <laughs> and they had set up what we used to call brush arbors back when I was a kid and, and, and my, particularly when my folks were young. And they're going to have an outdoor meeting, particularly in the summertime. They just set up some poles and some chicken wire or something, throw a bunch of uh, brush up on top of it, knock the sun off of it. Well, they had the, the poles there and everything, but they had these great big old banana leaves thrown up on the top of the thing. And it was night. 
and double dark. Oh, it was dark. And they had a little, they had a little podium. It's about the, the top of it was about, oh, I guess half the size of this. And it stood up just about that high. It's just, all it was, was a board on the bottom and they had nailed that board on the bottom of a stump and they nailed another board on top of the stump and that was the podium. Well, I mean, you know, it, it worked. It's a good one. And I'm standing, and they had a, a kerosene lantern that hung right here. I, I, I could read by it, but that, that light right, right in my face and it dark, 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 dark. And all the people black. I couldn't see anybody unless they smile. <laughs> I mean it. I'm standing up there preaching by faith. You understand that? Because I can't let lights in my eyes. I can't see. And, I, and when I'd get out from behind that a little bit, oh, I, you know, the, the little small place and I, I maybe could see, you know, I could see 15, 20 people once it got out of money that day. And I'm preaching on the authority of the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, it was so powerful in me and so strong in me. And uh, I had been studying this at, at this time for several years and, and it is still growing in And I was teaching on it. And all of a sudden there was a man appeared in my vision. <laughs> I mean, he, he, fi he just walked up to that. He was closest from me to you, just three or four feet away there. He walked up close to that podium. I could see him. And, and he said, lay your hands on me in that name. So I stepped out and around that pulpit and I laid hands on him and there's another one that walked up. So I laid hands on her. And when I got to where I could see a little bit, there was a whole line of them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm laying hands. Well, by the time I got to the back end of that, that arbor, there was a rock wall out, going across the back there. Uh, you know, it is, it is probably, I don't know, 60, 80 feet behind that arbor. That wall was covered with people. I wound up laying hands on something like 500 people that night. I didn't know they was there. <laughs> and that's all I did. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, the first time I ever experienced the, the power of this, as I told you earlier, as you've heard me tell before, and the first time I was in the invalid room with Brother Robert, and he, he, he said, now you're gonna do the praying and you're gonna do the laying on of hands. And I, that's when I had first begun studying this. And, uh, and it just flashed across me. My, and he said, don't touch them till you're ready to release your faith. Well, I'd never heard anybody say that. And while we're walking over to this first woman, it, 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 the Lord just brought it in, in, into my mind, out of my spirit. Ah, the name of Jesus is my point of contact. And I'm not going to touch them until I say the name. And that's when I'm going to release my faith. Well, that, as you heard me tell, that first one, just as I touched her and I, I didn't even get the whole name out. I just said, gee, as far as I got. But my faith was, had, had been released. And that's when Brother Robert shouted, I mean, under the, the force and anointing of that name. Cause listen to what he said. I mean, he shouted, he shouted until, I mean, it just, it felt like every hair on my head just stood straight up. It just sucked the wind out of the room. It was so powerful. You can't even imitate that. You foul, unclean spirit. In the name of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, take your hands off 
over God's property now. And she spit that malignant tumor up out of her stomach, out on the ground. My, 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 my. Now that's my first experience with it. My second experience with it was there in Jamaica. I'd laid hands on all those people in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Well, I'd, I got through and I had walked around the back of that arbor and was about to get in the pastor's car. And what I did get in, I just kind of plopped down in that seat because I prayed for, laid hands on a lot of people. And this little woman walked up to me. Now, now <laughs> this was so amazing to me. She said, Brother Copeland, thank you very much. I was blind, now I see, praise God. <laughs> And left. Turn around and left. <laughs> and I asked the pastor, I said, you know her? Yeah. Well, it surprised me that she didn't have any more emotion about her than that. I, I said, is she? Now, I had, uh, uh, there was another group there that had fasted a day, a week for a year, asking God to send them somebody that could teach them faith. But, and I thought, well, maybe, you know, it's something like that. Their spiritual eyes have been open. And I, and I asked him about that. He said, oh no, he said, she's stone blind. But they'd been taught, see, they were taught beginning years ago by British missionaries. And everything was so proper. In fact, they kind of got bent out of shape with me because I took my coat off to preach until we had a couple of miracles and he didn't care if I took my shoes off, you know. <laughs> but some of, the, some of the pastors discussed this. You think he can be anointed with, and just wear this, his shirt? And I, I realized he's gonna be all right. Amen. That, that kind of tradition. Well, she, she was emotional about it, but she didn't want to show it in front of me. She thought that wasn't proper. I sure wish she had, but, but you could hear it in, in her voice. You know. I was blind. Now I see. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Very close friend of mine, highly decorated fighter pilot in, uh, Vietnam, Southeast Asia, and part of the Misty Squadron was a powerful, powerful man. He was born again, and, and he, but he didn't know but very little about, about the Word. And in fact, when he's in service, he, he, he believed that there's no way you could kill him because he, he, he believed the word of God and he believed he was called to be a warrior and he believed he was, had the, the anointing of David on him and that you couldn't kill him. And you couldn't. And he had marvelous experiences. I won't go into all that. But I sure would like to, but I mean, you know. <laughs> he, uh, he later um, came with this ministry and ministered with us and we flew together and just, just, just a wonderful, wonderful man and family. And then he went into his own ministry. His name's Hugh Smith. Some of you may have known him or his background. He's in, he's in heaven now. And uh, went on into his own ministry and he was flying a little twin engine Cessna and uh, he went out to pre-flight it one day and of course, like all the rest of us, you, you, check, you check the ignition, make sure the mags are turned off before you pre-fly it and start messing with stuff. And he, he walked around the, the wing coming in front of the airplane. Now he's about to look into the front of there, just make sure there's no bird nest in there or something. 
and he just checked the oil and he come around in front and he moved that propeller. Now the mags are off, but the P lead in that magneto in the, in the ignition system was broken, which meant that mag was hot. You, you, it's undetectable. There's a way to check that, but, it, but anyway. He, when he moved that propeller so he could see in there, it fired. And that propeller came up like this, hit him in the nose, cut his nose off, hit this cheekbone and broke it, hit this eyebrow bone and broke it. And of course it just knocked him across that tarmac. He said, Kenneth, I, I was laying there. He said, blood is just going everywhere. And he said, I, I began to separate. He said, I'm, 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 I'm losing it here. And I knew it. But he said, every time I, I would say the name of Jesus, and he said, I'd say the name and then I'd say, I'm healed. I say the name and I'm healed. And he said, every time I'd, every time I'd say that, I'd come back to consciousness. Well, somebody on a tarmac called his wife. She went running out there and, and they found him in that condition and she called me. And so, man, immediately I started praying and I, she said, they're taking him to John Peter Smith. So I met him over there. By the time I got there, he's already there. Well, they had come in and they had taken x-rays of him and everything. And, uh, <laughs> oh dear Jesus, that doctor came back in there. He was laying on this, this table and he showed us the breaks and this and that and the other. And he said, now you're going to, he said, you're going to have to get a hold of a, a plastic surgeon to put that nose back. And he said, we don't have anybody here at this hospital to do that. So I didn't know a plastic surgeon. I mean, I don't go to a doctor but about twice a year, take a physical. I sure don't know a plastic surgeon, but I knew a doctor, I called him and I said, now uh, we need a plastic surgeon. I just figured you'd know one. He said, yeah, I know one. So he said, I'll call you back. So I walked around and, and the Lord began to talk to me about the name. And I walked around there. He, he's lying like this and his head is here and his feet are down here. And I heard these words. See the name above every name. At the name of Jesus. The knee has to bow. Yes. And I heard these words. Bones. Now I started with the nose. Nose. You're a name. Bow your knee to the name of Jesus. Bones, you're a name. Bow your knee to the name of Jesus. And that's all I heard. So I just started praying in the spirit and so did he. And um, so my guy called and he said, um, yeah, you'll have to go over to Harry's hospital, which is across the street and down the road a little bit. Well, <laughs> Hugh had a, this big wad of gauze and he's holding his nose on. <laughs> so we went over to Harry's hospital and he, he's holding his nose on with this gauze. So you, you could imagine how much time that took. I mean, it, it wasn't just a few minutes because that doctor had already told him up front, we're leaving, that's in the emergency room. Well, we went over there to, the, to Harris and this little woman's wanting to type all that stuff. I said, sweetheart, uh, can I help you here a minute? He's holding his nose on his face. We need to get him in to see the doctor. Oh, okay. 
And so they took him in there and, and, uh, and the plastic surgeon, you know, and all that. So the plastic surgeon took his x-rays. Now we, we, he sent Hughes with, we took his over there. He came back out there. He said, uh, well, you didn't need me. He said, anybody said, wasn't that just a piece of skin there? I just sewed up. His nose was cut off. He said, there wasn't just this little piece. And he said, he doesn't have any broken bones. He said, um, I just showed his, sewed that side of his nose up. You can take him home if you want to. Now, Hugh was sore for a couple of days. But two days or uh, two days or three days one. Two days later, he's uh, back out there. Got the pee lead fixed on that magneto. Got in that airplane. Went and finished his meeting out in West Texas. And he told me he said he said I, I was a little sore there for a little while. God, <laughs> man, he I mean he got the, he absolutely got the daylights knocked out of him when that thing hit him. You know. Amen. But see, those bones had to bow their knee to the knee. Yes, 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 yes. But now here's what's important. If your faith is weak in the name, it's, listen, faith in the name made the man strong. Yes. Faith in the name. The faith in the name connected to the power in the name. Did you learn anything this morning? Yes. Now here's what I heard the Lord say. Anyone in the room that's been diagnosed with cancer, I would like for you to stand. Anyone in the room diagnosed with cancer, there is an actual diagnosis of it, not something you just worried about. I want you to step out and come up here in front of me, please. Now, if that's not the case, don't, don't, don't come. Pay very careful attention to, to instructions. Now, the power, Jesus is here. And he and the power of his name and the healing power of God is here to heal everybody in this room. Amen. Amen. And anybody eventually watching these DVDs, I'm sure that these messages are going to come out on Believer's Voice of Victor Network one of these days. And, and if the, the power be on that. Amen. So now here's what the Lord directed me to tell you. I'm going to lay hands on each one of these in the name of Jesus. Now listen to what Jesus said. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and these signs will follow them that believe in my name. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now, a word of caution. Don't let your thinking pay the picture of recovering taking a long time. No, recovery can be instantaneous, just the same as it can be a week or a month or, or, or whatever. Amen. Hallelujah. But now that you've heard the word on the name, there's faith in the name working in you right now. Glory to God. Now, everyone else, you join me in believing with these people. And if you have any kind of sickness, 
any kind of disease, most especially something that's been diagnosed as incurable. I want you to receive it because you have faith in the name of Jesus. And this is the way that the Lord directed, this is where the word of the Lord came to me and, and directed me to conduct this and for you to take this and for you to believe it and for you to take your healing. You get ready. What, what is it T.D. Jake says? Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> Amen. Because the minute the name of Jesus is spoken, that is your signal to start believing and take it now. Amen. Will you do it? Okay, stand up and, and engage your faith with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the direction of the Lord of the church, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our healer, our Melchizedek, I'm going to lay hands on these people and I'm going to do so in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the anointed Messiah, the healer. And I thank you, sir, that through the law of contact and transmission, by the laying on my, of my hands and by the by the power of faith in the name will transmit that power and anointing to their bodies. And according to your word to me earlier today, I fully expect the greater one in the name of Jesus to manifest himself and heal everybody in this room, to heal every mind in this room and deliver every human being in this room from any, anything of the curse of the law. Glory to God. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Cancer, you're a name. Bow your knee to the name of Jesus. You foul, unclean trespasser on the bodies of the saints of God. Take your hand off of God's property. I curse you. Die. Today. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every cell, every, every disobedient mutant cell, the spirit behind it, leave. In 
in the name of Jesus. Many healings are occurring in the congregation. Many, many things are happening. Many things are happening. Many things are happening. Yeah, I get my expatriated. Thank you, Master. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name Jesus. Whoa. Bow your knees. Bow your knees. Cancer being, bow your knee. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing and complete deliverance. Uh-huh. Not only, not only, not only from that, but there are other things in your body that are being healed right now. Being healed. Being healed. Right now, right now. Uh-huh, thank you, Lord. Yeah, I heard this. Tell him he'll live and not die and do the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Like the bones of Elisha were saturated. Like the handkerchiefs from Paul's body was saturated. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In. Come on in the congregation. Get, get back with me. Get, get your faith going again. In the name of Jesus. healing 
things in the congregation. Many healings. In the name of Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Cancer cells, bow your knee now to the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. In a moment, I want you to help her. Glory to God. Somebody give me a microphone. the end of it. it was endometrial cancer and at the end of my treatment I had a CT scan and they said it's all clear I am cancer free I have to go back every three months for checkups they'll keep an eye on me but praise God I received my faith way back I claimed it and I had no doubt in my mind that Jesus healed me and he did <laughs> let's give the Lord praise now Thank you, Father. Thank you. <laughs> you know, Jesus said, when the Spirit's gone out of a man, he'll come back and see that house cleansed and move back in it and bring seven more worse than himself. Well, that's not gonna happen here. Because the scripture says, that it will not come again. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Spirit of cancer, bow your knee yes. to the name of Jesus. <laughs> aha, aha. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. I want you to get this now. Uh -huh. I want you to get this now. I want you to get this. Mm -hmm. The healing flow is flowing through your body, restoring and re-energizing what the chemo damaged. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Completely, you. totally healed, renewed body. Yes by the healing anointing and by faith in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because there's a difference, that there's a difference in being healed and being whole. Now I'm gonna tell you what Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in, now, now listen, go in 
shalom. He didn't say peace. He said shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And behold of that plague, your faith has made you. I asked them to stand you back up because I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't have long enough with my hand on you. In the name of Jesus, now hang on to her guys. There's a lot of power going through her body. <laughs> yeah, 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 I see it. Yes, sir, I see that. I see that. You spirit of fear and fear of death and fear of cancer, you have been broken. Your power is done for. And in the name of Jesus, according to Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, you are gone. Fear not, little one, saith the Lord, for all is well. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I couldn't stay up with it as, as, as I, I was hearing the Lord of, of healing. We laid hands on in the name of Jesus. And that was primarily the way the greater one, the way the Lord Jesus directed this morning. But what I just heard the Lord say, just as I began to explain it, I, I just, I heard him explain it to me, <laughs> amen. He said, when we did that, when, when, when I, doing what he said, and this is part of the ministry of the prophet, as I was laying hands on people in the name of Jesus, the gifts of healings, see in the Greek text, it's plural, both gifts and healings are plural. The gifts of healings began to function throughout this congregation because this congregation is full of faith. You've been under the word now for two or three days, you're full of faith and gifts of healings begin to function. Just take it, glory to God, it's fine, I take it now. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. In many cases, in many cases, not a few, but many, in many cases, the spirit of fear was broken this morning over your life. Most especially in the area of your finances. I began to talk about harder times that are coming and, 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 and the devil tried to make you afraid of that or what's coming. No, no, no. God's not telling you that because it's going to hit you. He's telling you that so you can get prepared for it. Glory to God. Amen. Did you notice how many times Jesus and the angels and God himself said, fear not, fear not, fear not. Don't be dismayed, fear not. They came and told you, Iris, your little daughter's dead. Jesus answered. Well, that's good, isn't it? The next time the devil tells you something, let Jesus answer him. Hallelujah. You just tell him. You just tell him, Jesus told me to tell you to get. Praise God. Jesus whirled around to Jairus and said, Stop the fear. Believe only. She will be made whole. 
I bless you. I bless you, my partners. I bless you with every blessing, heavenly and earthly, that's coming to glory in me and to this ministry for preaching this gospel. I bless you and I declare that heavenly blessing, that earthly blessing comes on you. In equal amounts, glory to God. For every person born again, every family healed, every person received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, everybody healed, every family straightened out. Oh, every financial blessing. You get the equal amount of reward for it as glory and I do. In the name of Jesus.